third generation pearling master James Brown is determined to save his farm and find an answer for his industry. It's a David and Goliath battle. In 2004, we grew literally the, the, the largest crop of pearls the world's ever seen, and we've, we've got the largest fine quality round pearl. Western Australia's Kimberley Coast provides a special environment that creates spectacular pearls. Well, they're the largest tropical tides in the world by far. It's what drives the ecosystem. It makes it very different to anywhere else. It drives the productivity in every, every aspect of it. But then out of the blue, everything changed. And then in 2006, something happened. It was like a, a, a switch flicked, and now everything's different. We can't even keep shell alive, let alone actually grow fantastic pearls. Signet Bay Pearl Farm is situated on one of the most isolated and pristine regions on Earth. The disease seemed to come out of nowhere and has still to be identified. This is Signet Bay receiving. Broken line out on the farm with the cleaning boat. Can you get out there straight away and assist, please? A purling farm takes years to develop. To keep it running is an ongoing process of crisis management. So we're heading out because one of our long lines is broken. All our shell hang in the water below these suspended long lines. If one of those anchor lines breaks, it wraps up and that means all the shell and the panels are hanging together and after a while they'll actually chafe each other off, drop to the bottom, get smothered in the mud and die. With a thousand pearls on each long line, up to half a million dollars can be at risk. Probably the biggest danger to a diver is his own mental state. Because you're diving in almost no vis often and then after that you've got all the normal things like killer jellyfish and sharks and crocodiles and all those other things as well, but of course uh, no one gets eaten by sharks, right? <laughs> the disease uh, is called oyster oedema disease. Uh, it's very difficult to, to identify um, because basically the, the, the shell are alive one day and dead the next. There seems to be no real reason for it. When I started up the research station, the, the pearling industry thought I was mad to let people come and actually basically see our dirty laundry, see everything we're doing. This is a family-run business, and James must answer to his father. My parents and everyone else that knew me probably didn't quite understand the concept as well. Now the disease has struck, James's father is prepared to keep funding the research station, but the pressure is on to get results. Definitely an optimist. Especially now that we've got um, some sound techniques on board to identify this disease, you definitely got to stay positive and think that we will be able to combat this disease one day and hopefully in the near future. We don't just go, it's too hard, it's not my problem, I can't do anything about it. The reality is we can, we've got all these things we can offer. That was the reason for staying in the research station. Eight years ago, Signet Bay Pearls produced 250,000 oyster shells a year with a wholesale value of $8 million. Today, revenue from pearls is down to between one and two million. Growing pearls is not like mining diamonds. We can't just stop, mothball the mine and then start up again. Those guys, once they're lost and gone, they're gone forever. We, you know, we've got to retrain right from scratch. James needs $4 million a year to run the farm. And he knows his father won't be patient forever. Guys, if you guys want takeaways, now would be a good time to get it. 6.15. Oh, I love the place. You can see the dolphins, turtles, sharks, all sorts of great stuff in the water. Pretty nice environment to have to go and work in. We've been living off here for a long time, living off the sea all, all our lives. We all come from the same reef, eh? And we all yeah. form the one reef. <laughs> yeah. James has opened the farm to tourists to keep it paying, while he battles for an answer to the disease. It does have its, have its perks, you know, you get to wear beautiful pearls and go to some amazing functions and meet some amazing people, but at the same time it is also hard when you need some extra help medical-wise or specialists, etc., then those sort of things can be a little bit challenging.
So the Signet Bay Pearl story really started here on Sunday Island. This is where my grandfather settled in 1946. He had a little camp across the other side of the hill here and he was based here for about 15 years until they moved to Signet Bay when they started culturing the pearls. My uncle was the one that had the vision and the, I suppose the uh, ability to work with his hands and figure out how to culture pearls. And looking back on it, it was my father that was able to actually bring it all together and, and make, the, make the business work. People ask me, do I want my children to take over the pearl farm? The reality is that I just want my children to be able to have options. So the only thing we can do is rediscover the environment that we've used for so long, we've taken for granted for so long, and see if we can't find out what went wrong. And if we can find that out, that'll give us answers about our future. Our future as pearlers. Our future as people here 